These are creepy TikToks that will make you rethink your whole reality. In Miami, the third prediction will truly terrify you. He was able to speak fluent Chinese even though he never spoke the language before. But he was last seen running from Havana Airport with just the clothes on his back. That's why you should always lock your door when you sleep in a hotel. This man was in the bathroom when someone tried to get into his hotel room by unlocking the door. Look what happened next. Eminem was severely bullied as a kid and was once beaten so badly that he was in a coma for four days. I'm back, it's your boy F-I-T-T-I to the E and today I got this compilation for you guys. I know it's a longer video and some of you guys actually do like my longer videos. So watch till the end of this video, I make an announcement and I know you guys have been waiting for me to do in-person content, for me to explore creepy places. I got some in mind, but watch till the end. At the end of this video, I will talk more about that. So make sure to stick around or you can just skip to the end, but I'm saying just watch through the video and then I'll tell you about it. But if you guys like the chain, check the link down in the description. Also remember there's a Google form where you can tell your stories. I actually haven't really been getting a lot of stories. So that's why I can't really react. I only got like two. So if you actually have a crazy story, just put it down in, just put it in the Google form. It's down in the description just predicted two major events that have already happened in 2024. They predicted the Japan tsunami and also the alien attack on the mall in Miami. The third prediction will truly terrify you. Watch until the end to keep your family safe. Dating back to season 17, episode 18, titled The Wettest Story Ever Told, the Simpsons are on board a boat near the coast of Japan when a large wave strikes the boat. This is when they realize it is no ordinary wave, but rather a tsunami, which then heads towards the city and wipes it out. They also predicted the alien attack on the mall in Miami, which happened two days ago in a more recent episode where Bart and Lisa are at the mall while on vacation in Florida, when they discover an evil alien lurking in the storage rooms. Little do they know, Minutes later, there will be a full-on alien invasion. They also predicted a third event for the year 2024, which is truly jaw-dropping. I've honestly heard about that Florida mall incident. I don't know. It's kind of strange because they're saying that it was just a bunch of kids, like, I think, throwing f uh, fireworks or firecrackers. So they actually thought someone was like, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> up the mall and stuff like that. <clears throat> In my opinion, I don't know. The, I know the government tries to cover things, and there was, like, a lot of cop cars. So, uh, that's a little bit strange. I never heard about the tsunami in Japan, though. I'm not going to lie. Here's the worst video on the dark web. These divers were forced to go and discover the never-before-explored seabed. They were scared and went through a terrifying experience. <laughs> You know, they do say only 5% of the ocean is explored, so just imagine all the crazy stuff that is really under the ocean. Man. <clears throat> it's also a little bit funny how we explored space before we explored our own oceans. I mean, I don't even know how we'd explore our own oceans. I really wonder what's super deep down in the ocean. Maybe there's, like, the Megalodon, you know what I'm saying? Some giant, like, octopus just coming to just... <laughs> <laughs> this is Jellyfish Arm is one of the worst prison videos ever explained. Before I begin, I just want to say this video is an extremely hard watch and I don't recommend looking for it. The video that I'm about to explain is under one and a half minutes long and as you play the video, you see a steel barred jail cell which looks like it's holding several men. It's hard to see what's going on but it appears multiple men are straining and holding down one man. 
On the outside of the cell are three inmates, two are holding what appears to be two thick wooden sticks or metal pipes. It's hard to tell because of the quality, but I think it's two metal pipes. It's hard to explain, but the man who is being held down has his arms extended through the prison bars. To visualize it, picture yourself in a jail cell and sticking your arms through the bars and extending your arms out. One of the men outside of the cell is holding a rope that is tied to the victim's arm and he is pulling it tightly so that the arm is completely outstretched and straight. The two men with the metal pipes then start hitting the victim's outstretched arm. After every hit, you see lumps appear on the arm almost instantly. They are hitting him so hard and often that lacerations appear. The screaming from the victim gets more and more intense and after several strikes, the man holding the rope reduces the tension and shakes the victim's arm. You can see that he has several bones broken in his forearm and his arm is partially floppy at this point. It's worth noting that a bed sheet has been placed and pulled over the victim's head in order to reduce the screaming. Once again, they strike the same arm several more times. The man holding the rope then unties the arm as the prisoner pulls it back into the cell. His forearm is completely floppy and he struggles to even pull it through the cell bars. And as you guessed, it doesn't get any better from here. They then take the other arm, tie it up, and pull it through the cell bars once again so the arm is outstretched. They then strike the arm multiple times, and despite the loud nature of the inmates and their attempt to muffle the victim's screams, you can still hear them, and that mixed with the sound the metal bar makes when it hits the victim's arm is just sickening. At 1 minute and 26 seconds into the video, it finally concludes. This is a terrible watch and there's little to no backstory behind it, but many speculate it was just a normal gang attack, but others say it was a punishment for stealing in prison which makes sense as they were incapacitating his arms. Regardless, it's a very sickening video and I don't recommend watching it. Yeah, honestly I would not doubt that was just stealing because I know back in the days they used to say that if people stole or did something that involves taking from another person, they used to like cut their arms off. That's what I heard that they used to do. Back in like the medieval days, you know what I'm saying? Like way back in the day. It's not like no 18 or 19. Um. Here's the most terrifying video on the dark web. While they're having a quiet chat, a strange man passes behind them. Honestly, I don't even think that was a guy. That looks like a shadow person. The only thing that made me believe it was actually a guy was the fact that he just jumped down from the window. <laughs> like what? Like what was the point of even climbing on the window to jump? He could have just walked up to him and grabbed him. Nah, nah, that nah, video is kind of weird, man. What y'all think about that? Put it down in the comments. A family just recently moved into a new home and a few days later are disturbed by something terrifying. Take a look. That is enough to make you want to grab your things, get out of there, and never return. Was someone playing a trick on them, or is this actually something paranormal? If I'm being real, that girl looked like that one girl from The Ring. Like, you know that one movie series, The Ring, where that girl with the long hair starts walking backwards? Like, I don't know, man. 
that looks fake. Like, there's no, hell no, there's no ring girl just in your closet. Like, what? And if there is, then your house needs to be evaluated, man. Never meet its gaze, or you might regret it. Trust me. I'll explain everything in the video. But first, know that I can only assist you if you've commented your name, added to favorites, and watched the video until the end. This strange individual is called Gluss, and it's a brand new creature that has just arrived on Earth. Its sole purpose is to plunge the world into total chaos, and recently, they've formed a sort of alliance with Kale and Kaylee, so things might become very dangerous from now on. If you see this creature, you must not look into its eyes, or what might seem like its eyes because it can steal your body without you realizing it and then commit the irreparable. You should be very wary of its seemingly gentle appearance because it's not at all the case, unfortunately. So don't be deceived by that. If you encounter it, run as far as possible and especially hide in a well-lit and crowded place because Gluss does not like crowds. I was not amused by that. That looks like some random girl just making TikToks in the bathtub covered with shaving cream. If I'm being real. It looked like she was just sitting there just like, mm -hmm, making TikTok videos in her bathtub. I doubt Glust or whatever the hell this name is going to come for you and take your body and soul. Hell no. Dark Web's most terrifying video. While playing a game, they are suddenly interrupted by a frightening event. I just see a cabinet door open and they were, they were out of there, bro. Honestly, I probably doubt that shit happened, dude. <laughs> They're probably just like, oh. oh my god, Becky, please open the door for a video. Becky was like, okay. Nah. This disturbing video has been shocking people for years. This video is about a woman named Nikki who becomes possessed by a ghost while doing a makeup tutorial. The video begins with Nikki normally introducing herself and her makeup tutorial. However, a little bit into the tutorial, the left side of the screen changes and Nikki immediately starts staring directly into the camera. And at this point, it gets extremely disturbing. Nikki then starts banging her head against the table and blood splatters everywhere. After this, she sits in the chair dead still with a swollen face and one eye twitching, while a lot of blood pours down her face. This video is meant to be a horror story and it is very effective at creating a sense of suspense and dread. The use of close-ups and sudden changes in the video are particularly effective at making the viewer feel uncomfortable. The video also plays on the viewer's fear of the unknown as it never fully explained what happened to Nikki or why she becomes possessed. This video has been praised by some for its originality and its ability to scare viewers. However, it has also been criticized for its graphic violence and its potential trigger to viewers with mental health problems. The video is just a work of fiction. It is an acting performance that is meant to be scary and suspenseful. It is not a real depiction of a woman being possessed by a ghost, but the video is so realistic it sends chills down your spine. Now, when I first watched this video, I thought it was 100% real and I didn't know it was fake. The video is so realistic that if you go into it thinking that it's real, you're going to believe it 100%. Many people still believe this video to be real, but it has been proven to be fake. Either way, it's still an extremely hard watch just because it's blunt force trauma and she's doing it to herself. And the way she looks after she bangs her head on the table multiple times is absolutely stomach turning. Still, I don't recommend watching this video, but if you do, I'm just warning you right now. It is pretty disturbing. I was watching one of his videos yesterday, literally on TikTok, and he was describing how the cartel eliminated this dude. And it was one of the goriest things ever. I'm like, bro. How you be watching all these videos? He's like, I saw the video and it was crazy. Let me tell you guys. I'm like, he sees some real stuff and then just reports stories on it. I'm like, bro. 
if if I was if I was him, bro, I'd be traumatized. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I can't be watching all these videos, man, and then just reporting to him on TikTok. Like he'd be seeing some real life stuff. Like I know he said the last one was fake, but he'd be seeing some real cartel, dark webs, crazy videos, man. I do. <sighs> I don't know how he just lives daily basis. Just like, yeah, you know, I just saw some guy just like get yeah, literally his brain just opened. But you know, I'm just gonna go eat some food. Chillin'. I don't know why they started moaning towards the end right there, though. Like, what? <laughs> what was the point of that? They're like, eh. Mad uncomfortable, bro. Watch to the end. Lady feels someone behind her as she walks down the stairs when this was captured. Look closely, you can see it all come down the stairs. Talking about orbs, you know how many people in my comments been saying that they've been seeing orbs in my crib? I'm like, yo, how are you seeing orbs behind me, bro? Like, y'all gotta take a sc I don't know if you can put pictures in comments, but y'all gotta send me some orbs, bro. Like, where y'all seeing orbs in my house? Like, I don't see no orbs. <laughs> I hope there's no orbs. Yo, imagine. I think those are the ghosts coming. You, hear, you guys hear those footsteps? I think those are the ghosts, man. I think that's through the orbs. Dark Web's most terrifying video. Out hunting, this man is stunned to discover two frightening buildings. this scream flee as fast as possible believe me this person was about to do some urban exploring in this house when they heard that creepy noise stick around until the end you're going to get goosebumps the man filming is named Jonathan and he has been a fan of urban exploring since he was little but he wasn't ready for what he found at the end of his exploration but don't worry to protect yourself you just need to comment with your first name share the video and add it to your favorites this house is located in an isolated field in Jordan, and it looks like an old church, all black, which is already quite creepy. Did you see all the mess in the house? Why did the people leave the dwelling so hastily like that? The moment you're all waiting for is about to happen, and I think Jonathan won't get over it anytime soon.
How is there a rope in there? Yo, that's got to be racist. What the hell? <laughs> Yo. That reminded me. When I'm about to start my, my in-person content, I'm, I'm going to go look at places like that. I'm going to be terrified. I'm like, yo, what the? <clears throat> yo, y'all better tune in, man, when I make them in-person content. Because I'm not trying to be out here going to them places just for two people to watch that shit. Yo, y'all all better watch it, bro. I'm telling you, it's going to be lit T. I'm going to make that. I don't even know how it's going to be because, uh, bro. I already got a couple of places in mind. I just got to wait for the weather to clear, bro. Just wait. Just wait till the end of the video. I'm going to make my announcement and tell y'all what's going to go down for the in-person videos. Because I know y'all been waiting for that. I know. I Trust me. I can feel your presence right now. And I know you are waiting for that in-person video, man. I'll be on my Sam and Kobe. I don't know if you guys know who Sam and Kobe is, but I'm going to be exploring, man. Seven mystery videos. Yo, that owl would surprise. He was like, oh, I didn't fly? What? I'm not gonna lie, all those animals look possessed, man. I'm scared, dude. What the hell? Here are some of the most unbeatable traps in the Saw franchise. Up first is the Venus fly trap. If you guys know anything about this trap, this is crazy. He has 60 seconds in order to get the key, which doesn't sound too bad, right? It's behind his eye. He has to fish through to get the key to unlock this trap from his neck in 60 seconds inside of his eye. Like, behind his eye, in the eye cavity. You could give me four minutes to do- it's just not happening. If you've seen this movie, you know exactly what happens. But he doesn't get free, and it just- it, it's a lot. You then have the silent circle, which at first glance isn't that bad. She just has a string in her mouth, right? Well, it's all the way down her throat and it's attached with a fish hook because the key is inside in order to unlock this trap. Buddy has to then pull up while trying to save her, get the key to unlock the trap all within a certain period of time. Just, just not for me. You then have the angel wing trap. This is just fucked up. She did it. She put her hand. Now listen, she has to take her hands and put her hand in the acid to get the key. Or something to get the key. To unlock this massive angel wing trap from her ribcage. She reaches in, loses all of the skin on her hand to get the key, puts the key in, and it doesn't work. Literally rigged the whole trap. And of course, if you've seen the movie, you know what happens. It is intense. But, yeah, it's just... It's up. This this one this one was bad. Not gonna lie, man. I'm saying I said this a lot in previous videos, but Saw X was a really good movie, dude. I feel like all the Saw movie franchises were like all the Saw movies were really good, man. I really like Saw. If you guys like content like this, you guys might like Saw. If I'm being real, if you've watched Saw, put it down in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. If you like it, if you don't, just let me know. Do not enter the haunted hill house. Experts have called it the most haunted house in the paranormal world. I won't sleep in this house. Um, I have before in the past, and that's when I was attacked. Attacked by what? They're not spirits, they're entities. They're bad things. Owners Catherine and Eddie Estes aren't the only ones who've been attacked. A lot of people have been injured physically in this room right here. Visitors can rent the house and do their own paranormal research, but most people who stay here don't make it through the night. Something crazy happened and they're like, we, let's, we need to go ahead and go. We've had scratches, bite marks, burn marks. And a lot of it comes from an entity they call Toby. We can go into Toby's room real quick. One of the women staying here took this picture. You can clearly see a face they believe is Toby. And it was one of the creepiest things. I've Other guests say they've heard Toby's demonic voice. Uh, it's very quick, <laughs> stuff like that. But what happened downstairs will make your skin crawl. The most you know, horrible things have happened in this room. Now watch. One of the women on the bed started taunting a spirit when all of a sudden something pulled her off the bed. We're going to rewind it again. 
A year later, that same woman visited the house again. Something scratched her so badly, blood soaked through her shirt. At this point, I wasn't sure I was believing any of this until... What was that? Did you hear that? In the middle of the interview, we heard something scratching. My microphone didn't pick it up very well, but I'm being completely honest when I tell you I heard it clearly. I just heard like scrap. And a little later, I heard the same demonic growling many others described. I'm not convinced if it was a ghost, a spirit, or a demon, but I do know I can't explain it. And if you don't believe me, make a reservation because I bet you won't make it through the night. That might have to be somewhere I visit, man, for my in-person content, dude. I'm about to go there and be like, yo, I'm here. You guys want to see what's going on? Let's see what's going on. Nah, bro. Stuff like that is kind of strange, though, because me as a person, I'm just like, maybe they're just faking it. Maybe there's someone just downstairs just like, ha, look at these freaking losers thinking this is real. <laughs> Never know, dude. Never know. <clears throat> but I'm still down to explore, though. I can't wait for that, man. It's gonna be fire. <laughs> we're, we're, we're friends. We just we want to ask you just a couple of questions. Is that okay? Okay. I'm gonna come a little bit closer. Bill don't want to play, bro. Bill is like, hell no, get out of here. I saw that in one of my earlier videos, and someone was saying that that's just a homeless dude that's living in the sword tunnels. Probably is, for real. If you see this woman, it may already be too late. Dante, a resident of the secluded town of Keystone, Kansas, lived a solitary life in his home in the middle of nowhere. One fateful night, as he peered out the window of his bedroom, he spotted a ghostly woman in a green dress standing in the distance. The sight sent shivers down his spine, and despite an hour passing, she remained there, inching closer. Ensuring all his doors were locked, he retired to bed, relieved that the woman had vanished come morning. However, the following night, Dante looked out the window again, only to find the spectral woman in the green dress significantly closer, mere feet away from his house. Trying to dismiss it as a figment of his imagination, he chose to ignore the unsettling sight. Once more, the woman disappeared by morning. But that night, around two in the morning, Dante was awoken by piercing screams and the pounding of fists on his front door. A voice begged to be let in, sending a chill down his spine. The frantic pleas persisted for five agonizing minutes while Dante hid in his upstairs bedroom, paralyzed by fear. It dawned on him that he had forgotten to lock the front door. The banging suddenly ceased, replaced by the slow creaking of his front door swinging open followed by footsteps ascending the stairs. In a panic, Dante locked his bedroom door and retreated to a corner. Within seconds, he noticed a shadow cast beneath the door, and the doorknob began to violently rattle until the doorknob broke off.
that first clip where the baby came and crawling like that, that was very impressive for a child. Damn. Yo, he was doing like bear crawls. Like you guys ever worked out and you do like, you know what a bear crawl is? Whatever the baby just did, that's what a bear crawl is. Those are not easy to do for a long period of time. Trust me. I told my mommy and daddy where wolves were real. At first, that looked like a bear, but I don't know. What the hell could that even be? There are some people who gained real superpowers after an accident. Now this man Ty Nock doesn't need any sleep and he's been awake for over 50 years. This is because in 1973 he got a really bad fever and ever since that day he couldn't sleep. Now a normal person wouldn't be able to function without sleep but Ty is 100% healthy and doctors have no idea how this can happen. Orlando Sorrell got hit in his head by a baseball when he was just 10 years old. Ever since that day Orlando has superhuman memory. He can recall every moment of his life including the day of the week and the weather on that day. Ben McMahon was involved in a car accident back in 2015. He went into a coma for one week but when he woke up something very strange happened. He was able to speak fluent Chinese even though he never spoke the language before. How was that possible? He was able to speak a whole lang a whole different language just for being in a coma for a week. That doesn't even make sense. I'm not gonna lie, the guy that could sleep too, that one's a very interesting. Like, how does your body repair itself? Does it repair itself while you're awake? He gotta at least have micro sleeps, like for a second or even like a minute or something. That is kind of like a real superpower, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not being able to sleep and just being able to just fluent in any language, just like. That shit just tripping me out, man. Known as the most famous missing person on YouTube. German national Lars Metank went missing at the end of a holiday he took with five of his friends to Varna, Bulgaria in 2014. Lars suffered an injury during the holiday and stayed longer than his friends to receive medical attention. He began to act strangely and was desperate to leave the country, but whether he did leave the country or not is unknown, for he was last seen running from Varna airport with just the clothes on his back, with not even his wallet nor passport. Lars' peculiar and distressing behaviour, the circumstances surrounding his disappearance, why he fled, and his whereabouts remain a mystery. No sign of Lars has been seen since. I'm not sure if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw a video on, I think, Amazon Prime. It wasn't a video, it was a movie that was describing some influence that went missing. So that, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if it was about that scenario. A woman named Lisa in her van camping out overnight. Lisa nicknames her van the Dream Machine, which she travels in. She was awoken from a deep sleep around 4.30 in the morning to a knocking on her van, right by her head. There were three sets of knocks each set with three knocks, and by the third set of knocks, she pulled out her phone and started recording. Somebody's back here again. I hear footprints. Hello? How can I help you? It's 4.30 in the morning. I don't feel safe. Who are you? The man knocking on the van can be heard saying, I have a question for you. For someone to approach a woman's van at 4.30 in the morning, knowing she's inside of it and saying, I have a question for you, is as big of a red flag as can be. Lisa then peeks out the front of her van to see a car parked way down the road with its headlights on, likely the car the person knocking on the van arrived in. So I quietly got up and I went to the front and I peeked out and parked way up at the, on the drive all i could see is like headlights and then they backed the out and went right and left there. whether there was someone else in the car or not is unknown the next morning lisa finds large boot marks in the snow right outside her van it's very possible the man outside of her van tried to enter the van only to realize it was locked luckily lisa had the doors locked but after something like this happens if you're in a vehicle it would be best to get behind the wheel and drive somewhere else immediately 
Fortunately for Lisa, things didn't go south this time. My opinion, that is a big red flag. I'm pretty sure bro could have, if he really had a question, he could have just asked her through the van. He didn't have to open the door. Let me ask you a question. Could have been like, I have a question. She's like, I don't feel so. Just like, I just wanted to know, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, that was a red flag. Good thing she didn't open the door. Me personally, I would have just left immediately. Or, you know what I'm saying? If it is really that bad, I would have just been like, what? He would be like, I have a question. Boom, 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 boom. No, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Should I cut that out? I might edit that out, bro. <laughs> Yo. <clears throat> That'd be tragic. Imagine. Imagine you're shooting someone. They're just like, hey, I have a question. Pow, pow, pow. Crazy. <laughs> this guy is the real Humpty Dumpty, and his story is much darker than you think. Deep in the eerie town of Puddlebrook, Kentucky, resided Gilbert Eggman, a man plagued by misfortune. His tale took a sinister turn when he joined the construction crew. Perched atop a towering brick wall on his very first day, three co-workers, fueled by malevolence, sent the ladder crashing down. Gilbert's pleas for help fell on deaf ears. Desperate to rescue him, the trio resorted to a crane. But destiny had other plans. The crane, guided by an unseen force, struck Gilbert, sending him hurtling to a grim demise. The town whispered of Gilbert's curse. In the following months, darkness consumed Puddlebrook. One by one, the three construction workers met their untimely ends, each death shrouded in mystery. Gilbert's curse, it seemed, had unleashed its wrath upon them, becoming an urban legend in the small town. Any single door at any single... <laughs> That was a girl's high-pitched voice. Hello? I just was down there too. I was just down there. It literally could have came from any single door at any single- What the f Any single door at any single- What the f Can you do that again? It makes sense to hear like a high-pitched female where I'm at right now, the lady in white on this floor. No way. Friends enter a building where a lady is yelling at someone when this was captured. Oh, nah, she was fearless, all right. She started kicking it. She was like, Te quieres, te quieres. <laughs> no way, bro. Yo, boy, how does she know she it can speak English? I mean, how does she know it can speak Spanish, though? Maybe it can speak German. Maybe it was a German demon. It'd be like, What is she saying? I'm not te quieres saying nothing. Did this man see a ghost? Danny and Travis were two employees of a crime scene cleanup company. While working at a house where a man who took his own life, they found themselves alone, diligently performing their duties. In the midst of their work, Travis stumbled upon a wallet belonging to the deceased containing $300 in cash. 
Ignoring Danny's warnings, Travis decided to pocket the money, nonchalantly saying what he gonna do about it. They completed the job and headed home separately. However, fate had a twist in store for Travis. On his way home, he was involved in a severe car accident. Paramedics arrived, desperately trying to save his life. As Travis locked eyes with one of the paramedics, a look of sheer terror crossed his face, as if he had come face to face with a ghost. Travis slipped into unconsciousness, only to later discover that the paramedic was the identical twin brother of the man whose money he had stolen. Nah, that is trippy. Imagine, dude. I'd probably look at him like, my bad, bro. My fault. No, I haven't been posting as often as usual on here about everything that's been going on. But I was just filming a video in my room for Instagram. Felt like I was being watched again. Like, just kind of feel like my hair started standing up. I'm posting exclusive content on my Instagram, so go follow me on Instagram, don't miss it. On my Instagram, I'm also gonna be announcing when I go live on TikTok. But I heard like, I don't know if it was like footsteps, but it sounded like something is coming from the other room. I really don't wanna go out there and check, but I have to. It sounded like noise was coming from the attic again. It looked like handprints again or something. In this video you're about to see, a young couple who just recently moved into their new home started hearing noises from up above in the attic. So the man decides to go up there with a light and camera and check it out. <laughs> the man looks around for several minutes but doesn't see anything out of the ordinary. As the wife is clearly very distressed and scared, the man maintains a calm, reassuring demeanor about the situation. As the man descends back down the ladder, the woman keeps recording and inadvertently catches something disturbing on video. What appears to be the wrinkled, gray face of an old man peering down at the couple for a very brief moment with an eerie expression. It quickly disappears back into the darkness above, going undetected by the couple. Some people believe that it may have been a homeless elderly man who was taking refuge in the couple's attic. However, given the small size of the attic, it would be very unlikely for the man not to have spotted a squatter up there. If you hear someone knocking on your bedroom door, don't open it. Here's why. A man by the name Danny Donahue explains that he keeps getting visited by this strange creature knocking on his bedroom door late at night. I keep hearing noises in the hall outside the room. I haven't heard anything for about five minutes now, I think. I was laughing because I'm thinking, bro, he's getting attacked by demons. He has the camera out just recording, bro. I was thinking, like, I ought to chuck the camera at that. <laughs> Yo. And I'd be like, what a bing. <laughs> nah, man. Y'all got to be thinking smart, bro. You can't be recording and just not use the camera, bro. Like, come on, bro. You got to use that camera, man. Wouldn't be surprised if I started doing something like that. You can never imagine that behind doors, the cheerful exploration, which is rooted in my real and unfortunate experiences. Hello, I am Donna Marquis, and this is the second part of my story. In the first part, I unintentionally attracted the attention of a tribe during an adventure, resulting in the loss of my parents and my best friend, a monkey named Boots. I walked through the Amazon jungle for months and miraculously found a village. However, when the villagers discovered me, I had been unconscious for several days due to exhaustion, and my condition was in a deplorable state. They were shocked, made an emergency call, and rushed me to the hospital for treatment. 
Several days later, I woke up and recounted my experiences, inspiring a writer to create a show with a focus on delivering positive messages to children. It became the beloved children's program we all know. While many children enjoy the show, it is not a pleasant experience for me because I can never escape those terrible times. When I watched the first episode, all the memories flooded back, and I began to cry, feeling desperate. Since then, I have never watched any episode of the show. I now reside in a mental hospital because I can never overcome the time I experienced, and every time I see someone watching this program, it triggers a strong emotional response. Damn, Dora. I did not know that was a true story of Dora. They made it so, like, Americanized, like, yay, happy, yay, exploring, yay, Dora, yay. Whole time Dora was going through the woods and months without food. No food, no water, suffering. Just so bad that she went unconscious for seven days, damn. But over here in America, yay, Dora, <laughs> that's messed up, bro. Hey, man, it's a crazy world we live in, dude. Evil world we live in. Never do that. This man filmed a jinn in a basement. A jinn is a mythological creature from the Islamic and Arab tradition, often described as a supernatural being or a spirit with extraordinary powers. They are typically capricious and can take various forms, such as animals or humans. Before showing you the rest of the videos, I want to clarify that I can only protect my subscribe who have shared, commented, and watched the video until the end. Type I am and let your keyboard finish the sentence. This woman filmed a jinn walking in the middle of the street. Have you seen its form? Do you think it took the shape of an animal? It's important to be very cautious with these creatures. Some say they can be more dangerous than skinwalkers. Dogs can sense jinns, and if you look closely, there is a dark shape behind the glass next to the door, and that's one of them. There are many myths surrounding what goes on inside of UK's Area 51. One thing we do know, it is under extreme lock and key. After failing to get in through the front door, we had to find another way in. The secret tunnels run concurrent with the metro line, so we had easy access to seeing the trains go by. Then we started to hear strange noises and realized that we weren't the only ones in the tunnel. The strange boat passed right beneath us. What was it doing inside the tunnel though? Had we stumbled upon some kind of secret operation? And if so, if they had caught us, what would have happened to us? Though we saw many strange technologies deep in the tunnel, we didn't stick around long enough after hearing sirens and alarms in the distance. Are there cameras? Dude, there's a light. Why is there a light? Not going on, I'm the type to go into some scary place, scary tunnel, see some demon, and just chuck the camera at the demon, bro. I'm not even joking. Don't be surprised if you see something like that in my new in my in my in-person content, bro. I'll chuck that shit, bro. I don't give a f man, bro. Hey man, that's good that they turned off the camera and got out of there, though. I mean personally I kept the camera on, but you know what I'm saying? You gotta prioritize. That's why you should always lock your door when you sleep in a hotel. This man was in the bathroom when someone tried to get into his hotel room by unlocking the door. Look what happened next.
the audacity of that dude, man. As soon as I saw that come out of the door and he's trying to open my Actually, you know what I would do? I would open it for him, open the door, boom! As soon as the door opens, <laughs> clock right in the face, shut the doors. You're like, yo, there's some weirdo like at my door trying to break in. Like, what the fuck is this dude doing? Hell no, man. I, I would have been mad. I would have been like, yo, the audacity you must have, dude. Big ups to that guy. He has a lot of patience. I would not have that patience. I would have been like, yo, he, you see how he like grabbed the thing and was like, no, don't open the door. I'll open it for him and just... Because he's not expecting it, you know what I'm saying? He's under, he's down here trying to, I don't be like, mm. This is by far one of the worst ways somebody has ever died, and whatever you do, don't look up the picture. This was 35-year-old Jill Greninger, and she was employed at Economy Locker Storage Company that was in Muncie Township, Pennsylvania. And inside of this factory, they had a bunch of industrial-sized meat grinders. The meat grinder that was involved in this story, I don't know exactly what style it was, but every single picture I pull up has this type of design. On April 22nd, 2019, Jill Greninger was inside of the factory hard at work. And what unfolded next, nobody is 100% sure about. There weren't any cameras that saw it happen, and there weren't any human witnesses that saw it happen. Jill was on top of a rolling ladder above one of the meat grinders, and they either speculate that a piece of her clothing got caught in the blades, or she simply just slipped and fell into it. Regardless of how it happened, Jill fell into the meat grinder. She would fall headfirst into a bladed system like this. Another employee inside of the building heard some sort of horrific sounds coming from one of the machines. The co-worker then went over and noticed that Jill fell into the meat grinder. Since Jill fell into the meat grinder headfirst, the coroner believes that she hopefully died almost instantly. The head portion of Jill's body was basically gone. After this incident, the factory was investigated and they found 11 serious violations inside that factory. And because of these violations, the company was fined $49,000. This death is just so awful because can you imagine how terrifying those first few seconds were for Jill when she fell into the meat grinder? I also find it weird how the fine was so low, especially when these safety issues resulted in a death. But nonetheless, this death is absolutely awful and made Jill Greninger rest in peace. That dude read my mind. I was thinking of the same thing. I was like, that's such a low fine for a meat company. Do you understand? That's like having, I would say, $10,000 in your bank account and someone finds you $50. Like, what? That's nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's still crazy, man. Like, uh, imagine, dude. R.I.P. her. And this is what I'm talking about. That dude just be seeing some crazy stuff, bro. And he's just been chilling like, and this today... She fell in to them. Like, how can he just be so chill talking about it? Like, he's seen some crazy. Yo, that dude. I don't know, man. This box was found at a house purchased on auction. Would you open this box if you found it? Wait till you see what's inside and let us know if you would use its contents. Behind Doris the Cheerful Exploration is actually based on my true and tragic story. Hello, I am Donna Marquis, a 7-year-old child from Mexico. My story dates back to 1989 when my parents were researchers, and my best friend was a monkey I had once rescued named Boots. We lived happily together in the jungles of the Amazon. I loved nature immensely and enjoyed exploring the forest. However, a tragedy was about to unfold. 
One day, while on an expedition, I unintentionally attracted the attention of a tribe. They invaded our home, and with my parents' protection, Boots and I escaped deep into the jungle to live. Unfortunately, my parents were forever separated from me. In the jungle, I felt despair, not knowing where to go. For a while, Boots and I wandered aimlessly through the vast jungle, barely surviving with what little we had. But my situation worsened, lacking food and water, and I even started hearing strange voices, thinking Boots was talking to me. To make matters worse, Boots eventually fell into a trap set by a fox and went missing, leaving me with nothing. Despite all these hardships, I did not give up. Determined to escape the jungle, I kept walking until miraculously, a few months later, I found a small village. However, more dreadful things were about to happen. If you want to know what happened, don't miss the next part. Well, we already knew what happened in the next part. That is crazy, man. I wonder if that's a real story. Like, that's really how Dora came to be. Oh, that's a little bit sad, if that's true, man. I don't know how she ended up surviving with no food or water for like a month. Or with, or with what little food or water she had for a month. And they were both found dead. She must have been out of her head. Welcome to 12 Days of Crimes. Today is day five. This was 46-year-old Trisha McCauley. On Christmas Day in 2016, she had made evening plans with her friends to attend their dinner party and she spent the entire morning baking. She even made a Facebook post at 4.30 p.m. that night claiming that she was on her way to the party but never made it. Now that wasn't unlike her as in the past she had been known to fall asleep and miss gatherings that were planned so no one really had any suspicions until the next day when no one heard from her still. After she was reported missing, police located her car and CCTV footage being driven, but by a man. The man was 29-year-old Dwayne Johnson, and when they located her car, they found her unalived, essayed, and wedged between her front passenger seat. Apparently, that night on her way to the party, she offered Dwayne a ride as he was walking in the cold. That is when he brutally took her life, all because she did a good deed for him. And get this, he was only given 30... Yo, when he said Dwayne Johnson like The Rock? Dwayne Johnson like The Rock? I'm like, yo, ain't no way The Rock did this to her. But now nah, it's just some random, bro. It's always some weirdos, dude. Like, why? Like, what, what made him feel to do that? Beneath the benevolent appearance of the Smurfs lies the reality of evil demons. Hello, I am Smurfette, one of the Smurfs. We always take the souls of children on full moon days and put them in snowdrifts until the following spring, when mushrooms grow under the snowdrifts and our new lives are born. Our blue skin is a sign of frostbite. And a white hat means it's covered in snow. And Gargamel is actually based on a real character, a very good German wizard. He was born in a small village in Spain in the 12th century. Because of his poor family, his mother put him in a basket at the door of the monastery and was adopted by the monks. Unfortunately, as the years went by, the people who cared for Gargamel passed away one after another, and he was very sad. So, he raised a cat. In fact, this cat helped Gargamel destroy our evil. As for the idea that our nature is actually based on the seven deadly sins, greedy snuff represents greedy, envy and pride are represented by brainy snuff, grouchy snuff represents sloth, hefty snuff represents anger, greedy snuff represents gluttony, and snurfet represents lust. And our dad is the only elf wearing red, which is the color of the devil. Therefore, we attract evil to the world, and it is the Gargamel's duty to protect the earth from these us. So remember, don't hold a grudge against Gargamel. Top 10 Most Disturbing Movies Ever 
Some of you guys were asking me to make my own personal list of the most disturbing movies I've ever watched. But I really had to sit and think and just let it marinate for a while. But before we get into the movies, I am going to say a couple of things. Number one, if you're expecting to see any of these movies on my list, you'll be sorely mistaken. I personally think that these movies are absolute garbage, and I will never in good conscience recommend it nor review these movies ever. So if you're expecting to see these movies on my list, well, you're not going to, so you can probably scroll on. Number two, some of the movies I'm going to talk about may not be suitable or appropriate for everyone, because they do deal with themes such as abuse, self-harm, and SA. And some people may be triggered by that, so this is your warning. And number three, this is my own personal list, so if you don't like it or agree, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Make your own list, I guess. <laughs> but with that being said, let's get into it. Number 10, Taxidermia. Taxidermia is a Hungarian movie about three different generations of men. Within each generation, things just get more bizarre, weird, disturbing, and f I remember the first time I saw this movie, I didn't really know where it was going, and about 15 minutes in, we get to that shed scene. My jaw literally just dropped watching that scene. I will say that this movie is not going to be for people with weak stomachs, so you have been warned. If you would like to check this one out, here's the list of where this one is currently streaming. Number 9, Climax. Climax is a French movie about a dance group who are rehearsing in a warehouse during a snowstorm. Everything seems to be going seemingly well, you know, they're dancing, conversing, having a good time, and drinking sangria. That is until they realize that someone has spiked the sangria bowl that they've all been drinking from with LSD. When I say this movie takes a sharp left turn, it absolutely does. And it takes a left turn into absolute madness and chaos. I will say for the first 30 minutes of this movie, you're just kind of watching them rehearse and dance, which, I mean, entertaining. But fuck, this movie, there are just things that happen in this movie that I wish I could unsee. If you would like to check this one out, here's a list of where this one is currently streaming. Number 8, Wes Craven's Last House on the Left. This movie is gritty, it's grimy, and just so unsettling to watch. Last House on the Left is about some escaped convicts who have a run-in with some teenage girls, and they do things to them. This movie, like I said, is just 100% uncomfortable to watch. Even the way it's shot, it's just so gritty and just makes you feel really nasty. If you would like to check this one out, here's a list of where this one is currently streaming. Number 7, The Sadness. The Sadness is a Taiwanese movie about a virus that has broken out. And this virus makes you act out your most intrusive, animalistic thoughts and behavior. The Sadness actually has a disclaimer in the beginning saying that what you're about to watch is extremely gory. And I 100% agree with that. Because this is one of the most goriest films that I've seen. But also be warned because there are multiple essay scenes in this one. And one specific scene that involves an eye socket and that's all I'm going to say about that. If you would like to check this one out, here's a list of where this one is currently streaming. Number 6, The Snowtown Murders. This movie is based on a true story. Police make a grisly discovery of bodies inside barrels in Adelaide, South Australia. However, it's everything leading up to that discovery that is absolutely disturbing, disgusting, and 100% upsetting. I only watched this movie one time, and I think that, for me, it was enough. If you would like to check this one out, here's a list of where this one is currently streaming. Number 5, The Human Centipede Part 2 Full Sequence. Everything you were afraid that you were going to see in the original Human Centipede is 100% shown in the sequel. Disgusting, perverse, vomit worthy. Those are the words that come to mind when talking about the Human Centipede Part 2. This movie is actually banned in several countries and they even made the director Tom Six purposely film it in black and white because of how graphic and disgusting this was. And that baby in the car scene, oh my god. I only saw this movie one time, but that scene is unfortunately in my memory forever, and I don't think I ever need to revisit this movie. But if you would like to check this one out, here's a list of where this one is currently streaming. Number 4, The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. This is a short film directed by Ari Aster. It's currently only on YouTube. I don't want to give away too much about this movie, just watch five minutes of it and if you're able to get through the first five minutes then proceed when i say those first five minutes and what the kid reveals i was just fucking shook and disturbed 
like I said, if you want to check this one out, it is currently streaming on YouTube. And I want to reveal my top three, but I kind of want to stop it right here because I really want to dive into why my top three is my top three. So we're going to pause for now. But what do you guys think of these movies so far? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. And I would also love to know what movies you think are absolutely disturbing. If it's not Glitter or Save the Last Stand, then I don't want to know because you don't know what disturbing truly is. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> Yo, definitely not checking those out. Hell no. Here are some morbid facts about Eminem. Eminem's father abandoned he and his mother when he was just an infant. In 2001, the man claimed he had a change of heart and wanted to reunite with his son, but Slim Shady refused. Eminem was severely bullied as a kid and was once beaten so badly that he was in a coma for four days. His mom even tried suing the school board for failing to sufficiently protect her child, but the case was dismissed. Years later, Eminem's mom tried suing him for $10 million for calling her an abusive drug addict in his music. She ended up settling for $25,000, but $23,000 went to her lawyer. When Eminem was a heavy user, he would swallow handfuls of pills without even knowing what they were. In 2007, he overdosed on so much methadone that doctors informed him he was only two hours away from dying. It was such a wake-up call for the rapper that he completely quit drugs immediately. Eminem relapsed the next year, but he went to Elton John for advice. Elton ended up calling him every day for the next 18 months and became a significant part of his recovery. Thankfully, Eminem has been sober ever since. Yeah, man, for these artists, it really be hard because like they're so influenced by that, you know what I'm saying, that drag culture, you know what I'm saying? So they they get sucked into it, and it's a hard world to escape. Like, you're really hooked. Huh. But hopefully you got the help you needed. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate anyone that has made it this far in this video. And <clears throat> what I was saying about the in-person content, it's been snowing a lot here in New York, like a lot. Like I think a week or two ago, we got like around like two foot, like two feet of snow. Like it was all the way up to my knee. I'm like, bro, am I in Alaska? Like what's going on? And um, recently while I was driving, um, I think last week, my car slid off the road and crashed into a wall. So I don't really have a way of transportation. So even if I didn't want to film my content, I can't right now because I don't have a car. Um, <clears throat> the faster I end up buying, you know what I'm saying, a car, a good car, I could probably start making content like that. So that's kind of what I'm looking for right now. <clears throat> so if you guys could just support me, you know what I'm saying, by just liking this video, help it get pushed to more people, that could help me. Um, also dropping the super thanks, which is basically where you donate, but I'm not trying to ask anyone for money. Like I'm not doing that, but if you do want to support me and help me get that quicker, you can also drop the super thanks. Cause I know a lot of people in the past have donated me like five, $2 and I really am grateful for those. So if you do want to support it, you can, but you don't have to, like, I'm not, I'm not asking you for it, but I'm saying it is an option, but just remember to check these chains out. 99% of these are actually free right now. So you guys could check them out down in the description. Remember that there's also a Google form below that where you could tell your scary stories. I need more stories to actually make the video, the reaction video to your guys' stories. So if you guys like the content, just like the video, help me get it pushed. New car hopefully coming soon so I can start making these vlog contents for you guys. And thank you so much for watching. Peace out.